I can't say no to any type of media that's about gangsters, whether it's movies like Goodfellas or Godfather, or even video games like this one we are about to cover. I've gotten the plat for Mafia 2 twice now, and even got 1000 gamers score on an Xbox account I can't remember the password to. I love this game, period. It's not the best open world game or best cover shooter or maybe even the best story in games, but it certainly has Colioni. Incredible characters, expertly voice acted with a top notch script, and a roller coaster of a story about becoming a made man. That's what makes Mafia 2 so great. It's a bit rough around the edges, but like our anti hero Vito Scaletta, it has a heart of gold. And to go along with it, you got a pretty great and pretty challenging trophy run that really only has one problem to it. I mean, it's got tons of great moments in the game already, and the trophies definitely do a good job of capitalizing on them, plus quite a few incredible environmental trophies that are still memorable to this day. It's just that there's a specific collectible type that spoils the soup, because the other collectible type is more than fine. Trust me, more than fine. But it's this one collectible type that can make this trophy run a bit tedious. The real original gangsters of this game know what I'm talking about, but it's time to cover one of my fave games of all time and invite the uninitiated to the Platinum Mafia crime family. This is... Platinum Hunters. The show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. Don't forget to check out my Mafia 1 trophy guide already on the channel. It's been there for a while. It covers that freaking race and how to beat it. And of course, subscribe for more trophy guide videos just like this one. Because you might just find your next Platinum Trophy. Get ready for a challenge on this trophy run as you have a few wrinkles on your new swanky tailored suit that you have to iron out. The big one is that you have to beat the game on the hardest difficulty. We've done this before in Mafia Remake but you don't have all the niceties of modern cover shooters in this game considering it was released back in 2010. It will give you a run for your stolen money at certain points in the game for sure. Then. We have a bunch of cool environmental trophies and some trophies taking advantage of cool moments in the chapters. Chapter select is available if you need to go back and get them if you missed them. Lastly, we have that collectible grind we mentioned, which will tack on numerous hours to your overall playtime. If you are playing the PS4 Definitive Edition, it will be even longer. However, the Definitive Edition does give you a few goodies in your garage that will make the trophy run easier in other ways. Grab a piece and a ride from the garage, cause we're about to go on our trophy hunt now. But note that I have more helpful guides in the description below to assist you if you need it. There may be 48 trophies total in this run, but 22 of them are unmissable trophies, whether they are trophies you complete after finishing chapters, story trophies, or even trophies that are unmissable no matter what you do. I waxed poetic in the intro, but I really can't stress this enough. The game's production values, when it comes to the story, is incredible, and you will be taken for a ride. I'll admit that even back then the gameplay was already a little bit rough around the edges, but it's always been a vehicle for the story and the rise and fall of one, Vito Scaletta. Once you complete that tale to the end, you will complete the Made Man Trophy if you finish the story on medium mode or higher. Sorry easy mode players, no gabagool for you. If you want to just enjoy the game, maybe an extra playthrough is a good idea. But ultimately, if you want to get the trophy, you will need to beat it on the hardest difficulty, hard mode, in order to get the Tough Nut Trophy. 
I've completed this trophy run three times and each time there were certain chapters that really walled me. Vita will go down after a couple of well played shots so you really have to stick to cover like glue. If you have played games like Uncharted or Gears of War you might have the leg up on this mode but I certainly don't think the shooting mechanics are as refined and snappy as those games. There's no snap aiming feature so popping in and out of cover might have your reticle far away from the Goomba you're trying to whack and you might get shot. The biggest problem with a lot of these intense firefights is that checkpoints are also not kind. Not kind. And are few and far in between. Like in chapter 5 where I nearly got to the top of the building, died, and had to start right at the beginning of the whole set piece over again. And there are numerous times where the checkpoints are not on your side in this game. Certainly, the last mission in the observatory throws enemies at you like crazy and one slip up throws you back to the beginning of it all. Now the whole game isn't like this, but it is indeed these shootouts and firefights where Mafia 2's hard mode might be a wise guy and slow you down from getting the tough nut trophy. You are going to need a modicum of patience dealing with these moments, a handle on the cover shooting mechanics, which again, are not to the level of some of the best third person cover shooters out there, and of course, some luck. I won't say it's one of the most difficult hard modes out there because it's not, but it does pack a punch. After you have completed the game, it's time to go back and clean up all the trophies you have missed out on. There are a bunch of chapter specific trophies to collect, but they have spoilers, so I've decided to leave them to the very end of our trophy run. So if you're looking for those, they're at the end of the video, just check the chapter markers and you'll see it. Instead, we're going to do the collectible trophies first, which are a mixed bag in this trophy run. You first get the collector's item trophy when you find your very first collectible item. But what are we looking for? Well, let's start with the collectible that makes this trophy run much worse than it should be. Now we have the card sharp trophy to grab after you find all the wanted posters scattered on walls and buildings all over Empire Bay. I guess these collectibles are kinda cool aesthetically because they feature all the devs who worked on the game in gangster getups with cool nicknames. However, I guess the dev team was pretty big because there are a total of 159 wanted posters to find and that's just strictly speaking about the PS3 version of the game. When the definitive edition of the game was released, they added 30 more wanted posters to make the PS4 version's grand total rise to 189 wanted posters. There is no in-game tracker for any of these collectibles, so you will have to do this the old-fashioned way, unfortunately. I have guides down below for the original 159 and the extra 30 depending on which version of the game you are currently playing. A silver lining here is that none of these wanted posters are in places where you only access in specific chapters, so you can start hunting these things down as soon as you get free reign to explore the city. This collectible type is going to add a lot of hours to your playthrough, but with this next collectible it's not all bad. The other collectible type for the ladies man trophy is much better. To get this trophy you have to collect all of the... wait for it... wait 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 wait... Playboy magazines! Yes! The other reason you might know of this game is because it has this infamous set of collectibles in it. As opposed to the wanted posters that you can grab whenever you want, there are a handful of Playboy magazines in every chapter that you'll have to grab only in that chapter. Like there is one sitting on Joe's apartment table in chapter 2 and it won't be there again in chapter 3. So I've got another guide to help you grab these specific collectibles that are awesome. As you play the game or go back after the fact using chapter select. Enjoy these classy mags if that's something you're into. There is one more collectible trophy but it doesn't really ask you to collect them but instead drive them. You have to drive 30 different vehicles in the game to unlock the trophy petrol head. Now one thing to keep in mind because you're going to see a lot of repeats on the streets is that the story 
has a couple time skips, so more models of cars will appear over time. This trophy is also a lot easier on the PS4 version of the game because they will fill your garage with goodies right off the bat, including the very excellent Samson Drifter from Mafia 3, this magnificent beast of a vehicle. So considering there are way more than 30 types of cars in the game, you should get 30 pretty naturally as long as you're breaking into cars and using them regularly. That's collectibles done, and we have a bunch of miscellaneous and environmental trophies to nab next. We have some related to cars, some for causing violence, and some for looking swanky. Let's start with some violence first. The knucklehead trophy is for beating down 30 people with melee attacks. Now the trophy for gunning down 50 enemies is pretty much unmissable, but this trophy maybe not so much. Especially if you're playing on hard mode where running up to people to melee them, not a great plan. So you might have to collect this trophy after the fact. Load up a chapter on easy mode and when you get to one of the big firefight moments just use your fists instead. Next trophy is going to take some markmanship instead of just spraying bullets with the tommy gun. No. Now we have the hairdresser trophy where you'll have to get five headshots in rapid succession according to the description of the trophy. This trophy is quite finicky and it demands perfection despite the gunplay not being all that great. So you will need to go from headshot to headshot being sure not to hit the enemies anywhere else on their body and you need to do this in a span of about 20 to 25 seconds. It's an annoying trophy to contend with for sure, but I found the Greaser's Hideout in Chapter 8 to be the best place to get this trophy. There is a checkpoint where you can get your hands on an M1 Garand, which makes headshots easier than your pistol. There will be lots of Greasers to shoot, and if you mess it up, you can just restart to the checkpoint and try again. I'm making it sound easier than it is, but at least now you have a plan and a place to pull this off. Now that you're a made man and swimming in money, you need to buy yourself only the best looking attire for the Sharp Suitor Trophy. You get this trophy when you buy your first luxury tailored suit and there is only one store in Empire Bay that carries them. The joint is called Vangles and the suit you purchase has to say tailored on it. You won't be able to get this trophy anywhere else at any other store and no casual suit is gonna cut it. Only the best for my boy Vito. Since you're in the neighborhood, you might as well get the stuck up trophy as well. You have to rob 5 stores in under 5 minutes and just north of Vengles is a cluster of stores with gas stations, clothing stores and bars that you can rob. Make sure you have a piece on you and a getaway car because you're gonna be sticking up some cashiers and grabbing the cash in the register and vamoosing. Chances are you will get the cops on you, but don't waste time because you have to rob five registers before five minutes is up and that is quick. This is a fun trophy to go for and it might sound hard to do, but in that specific area where it's densely populated with registers to get to, it's quite easy to pull off this heist. Now, you meet Mike Brewski early on in the story and are introduced to a good way to make a quick buck. You can also get the trophy Proper Scrapper this way by selling 5 cars to Mike Brewski whether they are your own or not. Probably not, am I right? If you just want to get the trophy done quickly, a bunch of cars randomly spawn all around Brewski's junkyard so you can smash the window and drive them into the scrapper machine. You only need 5 cars for the trophy so it's super easy to get done this way. So for the exporter trophy, it's the same shtick but now the buyer is a lot more picky with what you bring in. You have to sell 5 cars to Derek Papalardo at the docks but he only wants certain luxury cars. The chances of those cars spawning close by to the docks are very slim so you're gonna have to go out and look for them, probably rob them as they drive by. The later chapters will have them appear more frequently so load up one of those when you go for this trophy. It's a bit inconvenient, but again, it's only 5, so it's not really that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. 
there is a pair of trophies you can collect at the auto shop for upgrading your ride. After you repair your vehicle, because you probably crashed it, you can get the tuned ride trophy the first time you upgrade a car's performance to the first level which is called basic tuning. This will certainly give your car some much needed punch, but it can handle more. Keep upgrading the same car until you get to the dream handling trophy in which you need to upgrade a car's performance to the max level of 3. Not all cars are able to do this, but most of the regular cars you can swipe on the street will be able to upgrade this far. The Jefferson you swipe from the Bombers Gang at the beginning of the game can do it, and if you still have it in your garage, upgrade it to the max. Unfortunately, the Samson Drifter can't do it, but that thing is already a beast anyways. The Samson Drifter is going to be mightily useful for this next run of trophies. I love the name of this next one, but for the Get Rich or Die Flying Trophy, nice, nice. You have to get some serious air and get all four vehicle tires off the ground for at least 20 meters and then touch ground again. That's important. You have to land back on all fours. There are a bunch of spots where you can do this, but one of them includes riding through the highway tunnel and hitting the hill with some speed. That will get you some good air, especially if you drive something fast like the Samson Drifter. Another spot includes driving along the bridge and flying over the hill at the end of it, although you have to be careful not to smack the side of the building. That second spot I mentioned is also a good place for the pedal to the metal trophy. You will need something fast as well and rev the car all the way up to at least 125 miles per hour. The bridge is a long stretch of road that also has a downhill portion to give you even more speed. Now by today's standards, 125 miles per hour is not a lot, but remember, back then, cars didn't move as fast as they move now. Unless you got the Samson Drifter, which came from the future somehow in this game. If you have the PS4 version, I'm telling you, you've been given a serious gift. And the Samson Drifter was also the car I exclusively used for another trophy called One Careful Owner. Now you have to travel 50 miles using one single car. That is a lot of driving that you might not want to do after the fact. Although if you do have it, you can do it while you get those wanted posters. Otherwise, I would find the car you want to drive for the rest of the story and put on the miles as you go. Thankfully, cruising the city is really fun in this game. And you're gonna see quite a lot of it as you go for this next car trophy. They really packed this trophy run with car trophies and the cruise control trophy is one of them for hopping in a car and keeping the car speed higher than 50 miles per hour over 5 minutes without dropping it below that mark. This is going to be a slightly weird trophy because in those 5 minutes a lot of things could go wrong. You could crash into a wall, crash into oncoming traffic, lose control of the car, and the possibilities continue to stack. I think the best way to win this trophy is to drive a fast car from the beginning of the highway to the end with the speed limiter on and pray that traffic is not bad that day. You will maintain more control of the car this way with the limiter on, so you should be able to successfully weave through traffic going too slow. But other things could go wrong, so good luck as you try to maintain your speed and not drop it for whatever reason. And finally, we have one more to talk about. The other times I did this next trophy, I found it pretty hard to do. But coming back to this guide, I discovered a very easy way to do it now. It's a foolproof plan. But let me introduce the trophy first. Hard to kill is what it's called and you will have to survive a single police chase for over 10 minutes. It will have to be one crime spree with the police chasing you down who will certainly try shooting you and putting police cruisers in your way as roadblocks. So you have to survive in that sense but you will also have to make sure you don't lose the cops completely and the chase drops. 
So it's all a bit annoying, you have to make sure the cops are not close enough to shoot you dead, but you also can't have them too far away, or else you'll have to slow down so they can catch up. It was a pain trophy to get until I found out there's an armored car in the game. Yes, I wish I knew that sooner. It's not common, but you might see an armored car drive by and that's your cue to carjack it. Then all you need to do is piss off the police, throw on the speed limiter, and let the police try to stop you for 10 minutes. It's the ultimate way to do this trophy because you won't take damage at all. You just have to make sure the cops stay on your tail. Once 10 minutes go by, the trophy will be yours just like that. Alright, we have just six more trophies to get to, and they are the ones I mentioned before, the chapter specific trophies. But before you become the ultimate gangster of this era, be sure to whack that like button to tell me you want to be part of my platinum crime family. Or maybe it would be better if I said subscribe button. Whatever, just smash something, okay? That's all you gotta do to get into my crime family. For this final run of trophies, we have six different scenarios across four different chapters, and of course, they include spoilers, so keep watching if you have chapter select unlocked and have beaten the game already. Load up chapter two, and while you're walking over to Joe's apartment for the first time, you can get the A Real Gentleman trophy from this arguing couple with a car that has stalled. You might walk by them if you treat them as background dressing, but if you stick around to hear their whole argument, you can actually fix the car for the woman and get a trophy. Vito's heart of gold right there. Then in chapter 3, we can grab two trophies and they happen back to back. First, we can get the professional trophy during the part of the story where you have to obtain ration stamps found in a safe. For the trophy, we will have to do this without raising the alarm or making our presence known to the police. Once you enter the place through the window, what you need to know is that there are three guards, a key to grab, and the coveted safe on the top floor. Start by stealth killing the guards so you can walk around the place easier. Then, most important, head down to the basement of the building and find the switch that will shut off the alarm to the safe. Those wise guys thought they were clever, but clearly not enough. Now you can get the key and open the safe to grab the rations in peace. Once you get out of the building the way you came, you got yourself your new trophy. After a cutscene, now you will be on a time limit while you try to get the mailman trophy. Those ration stamps you just swiped, well, they expire at midnight and you are pretty damn close to midnight. Now you have to sell all the stamps to six different gas stations before midnight hits and time runs out. The game will continue on even if you don't complete this, but we need to be successful for the trophy. So grab a fast car and book it to the nearest gas stations close to you and press square when you pull up your car to the gas attendant. Then it's off to the next ones and if you open your map and set a custom waypoint, this will make finding it easier. Time stops while you're in the menus. The whole section can be a bit challenging, but there are a cluster of gas stations close by to each other, so I suggest going to those first before the ones on the outskirts of Empire Bay. If you're quick, you can cash in all the stamps and get the trophy. Then in Chapter 5, Vito's Heart of Gold again here on display. You will have to help Joe's girl at the beginning of chapter 5 to get the A Lesson in Manners trophy. This little scenario is almost unmissable as they play the cutscene for what happens and you will naturally want to go there. But actually, it's not the main objective, so you can just walk by or drive away from it. So that's why it's not one of the unmissable trophies and I'm mentioning it here. Now we will jump all the way to chapter 11 where you can get the two last trophies you need. We got the wake up call trophy which you'll need to help Leo get out of the house without being caught before Henry and his boys whack him. This is an awesome moment in the game where you can try a number of different ways to hide Leo or defend him while he gets out. 
but there's one true way to get out here unscathed and you'll need to follow the route that I am taking on screen now until you find some sheets in a basket that you can use to scale down the balcony to a getaway car. This is the only true way to get this trophy, but the other outcomes are also fun to explore on your own. Just make sure you restart the checkpoint before the scene plays out if you get caught, or else you might have to redo the chapter all over again. Finally, we have the end of the rainbow trophy later in that chapter. Getting some sweet revenge, you show up to a bar and you're looking for Mickey. Yeah, that's pretty on the nose, Irish guy named Mickey, holy. Anyways, for the trophy you have to kill Mickey and make sure he doesn't get away. He can do that by the way, the story will continue on even if he gets away through the back of the bar and in his car. Once you get outside, chase his car down or try shooting the tires to slow him down by whatever means necessary, stop Mickey from escaping and take him out to get the last bloodstained trophy in this trophy run. And quite the run it was. Some parts are challenging, some parts are a bit grindy, but most parts are very, very fun. I think most of the trophies here were made with a lot of thought and now that you have hustled to get them all, it's time to award your riches. If you have sent a bunch of guys swimming with the fishes, drove a bunch of luxury cars, experienced the rise and fall of some of Empire Bay's most notorious crime families, got to read a bunch of classic issues of Playboy and collected all the trophies, congratulations! You will be awarded the Platinum Trophy, Platinum Trophy for Mafia 2. Okay fine, at the time the game came out they could have gotten away with this name, but the Definitive Edition, no excuse for not coming up with a better Platinum name. Fangulo. So Mafia 2 got three packs of DLC back in the day, but only two of them received trophies. Those packs are the Joe's Adventure DLC and Jimmy's Vendetta. One of them is a more goofy romp with our lovable sidekick as the main character, the other is a harrowing tale of revenge with a brand new character we haven't seen before. Now if you have the Definitive Edition on PS4, all the content is included, but if you're looking for the DLC on PS3, it's unfortunately been delisted from the PlayStation Store due to licensing issues. Probably the music. You'll have to track down a greatest hits copy, which doubles as a Game of the Year version with all the DLC on disc. At least you can still access it from this version, but honestly, just get the Definitive Edition, even though it's not quite a perfect port of the game. I wasn't planning on making a New Game Plus video for these two pieces of DLC, but if you want, let me know in the comments section and I might make it and you might see them hit the channel. Overall, I think Mafia 2 has a pretty memorable Platinum Trophy run that you'll have to put the work in to get, but it will make you rich in accomplishment. Sadly, not money, you're not getting your cut of the money, sorry, no. There are some great chapter trophies taking advantage of some great story moments and some interesting environmental trophies that you don't really see done in too many modern trophy runs these days. Oh, and the collectibles of course, giggity. Not the wanted posters, which is the only awful part of all this. And maybe hard mode is going to be a pain at times, but I do that mode twice, three times, four times if it meant I didn't have to collect any of the wanted posters. But anyways, Great plat, and now that means we have covered the first and second games on the channel. So I guess that means we should cover Mafia 3 at some point, although I have been hesitant to play it because I heard it's buggy and there's some glitch trophies. But Vito is in it, so my curiosity for more of this gangster crime drama is still at an all time high. That's it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, I got this one out lickety split, I just needed to record footage, and I hope if you're checking it out for PS Plus in the month 
of November. I hope this guide helps you get it and takes care of all those miscellaneous trophies that you might need a little bit more explanation for. Let me know down in the comments section if you're going to play the game or check it out. Let me know if you have the Platinum already. And of course, I hope all your Tommy Gun shooting, trophy hunting expeditions go incredibly well. Peace out.